there are different types of self-acceptance. And I think this is really important. And it's only something I've thought very closely about in the last handful of years, because I spent most of my life hating myself, at best tolerating myself for moments. But there was a lot of self-loathing driving performance. And I, for a long time, viewed any type of self-acceptance as complacency. It was just self-acceptance equals complacency, period. Yeah. yeah. And you need to be your own devil whipping yourself in the back to try harder. What I've realized, and this is informed by a lot of reading, of course, is that there's, there's, there is complacent self-acceptance where you say, everything I'm doing is just fine. I don't need to change anything. Right. And I shouldn't change anything. Okay, I want to, oh, I need to stop there for a second. You can edit it, but I'm a okay. pauser. I need, I'm a, I have okay. to think. There is such thing as what? And I can modify, I can modify. But I want, I want you to say what yeah. you just said So what first. I said is, I do think there are multiple types of self-acceptance. Right. And that, that, that term self-acceptance could be used to excuse complacency in the sense that you could say, I am practicing self-acceptance, which means everything is great. Everything is as it should be. La, la, la. I don't need to change anything. But then I'll just add one more piece. There's, there is a self-acceptance which says, for instance, as an example, I'm making this up. I like, to write this but down. like right now, I am nervous and I'm frustrated and I'm angry because A, B, and C is happening in my life and we're doing this podcast and I'm bald now and like in 2007 and oh my God, <laughs> am I, is my head just a shiny cue ball on camera right now, blah, blah, blah. And I could accept all of those things as true because they are. Those are my experience. And then for some of them, I could resolve to take steps to Im improve upon those things, right? So there's a situation I need to fix. Great, let me go fix it because that's making me or uh, agitating me in some way. So I think that there are there's a there's a self acceptance which is a macro. I don't need to change anything. And then there's a self acceptance which is really just truthfully accepting whatever you're experiencing at the moment as what is happening as opposed what to saying is. i don't want to feel angry i don't want yeah. to feel angry and like fighting and fighting and fighting and tugging yourself in multiple directions so that might sound kind of esoteric but for me it's been very profound in that like, you can be forgiving of whatever you are experiencing in your body in your psyche in the moment while still putting in place steps to improve whatever it is you're hoping to improve, right? I think it's possible to do both. I think it's, I think it's possible to do both too. I, I do. Cause I think I live, I live both. And I do, I go back to like the Jungian belief that the paradox is the only mm -hmm. real thing that is, has enough tension to, to capture human experience. So I think you can have self love and self acceptance and want to be better in other in ways. I think mm -hmm. and in fact I don't think you can change without okay so here 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 are the pair here are the things I want to unwind. Mm -hmm. I don't think you can truly change for the better in a lasting meaningful way unless it is driven by self-acceptance. I agree with that. Yep. So I think being the shit out of yourself for, for performance, which, you know, I work with a lot of sports people now, like I, it works. Mm -hmm. And if all you have to do is pay someone for one season or yeah. all you do is one game or one whatever, you're okay. But lasting meaningful change has to be driven by self-acceptance. Yeah. The other thing that is just so shocking to me about complacency and self-acceptance is as I think back, and I would really have to go into the data, but just sitting here, I don't think I have ever come across a single person who I, that, not a single person that I can think of who ha was complacent, driven by self-acceptance. Like, I don't think, I don't know, I don't know that that is not an oxymoron. I, I got to tell you that like self-aware complacency doesn't work for me as a construct. Self-aware, no. Uh, I, I don't or self accepted I, complacency. Yeah, I don't know that I believe that. Yeah, I, I mean, I'll, I'll push. I'll push a little bit. I would. I say, knew you were going to because yeah. by the look on your face. Yeah, I would say. <laughs> I, I hope you caught and, that. And, and I think that I'm I'm struggling for the right terminology, but I think we all know people who are alcoholics have various issues, totally. and they are in denial of mm -hmm. having problems. Yes. Let me stop you there. Yeah. And say that is neither self-awareness nor self-acceptance. Definitely not self-awareness. But not self-acceptance either. 
Well, I would, I, we, and maybe there's a better word, but I would just say that there are people who are delusional to the extent that they either believe they don't have a problem that they have, or they have a problem and refuse to accept it as a problem. I think for that, sure, right? So, so, it, and uh, we can go a lot of directions with this, but I would, I would say that, uh, I think we can agree there are complacent people. Right? There are complacent people. And among those complacent people, I think there are those who hate themselves. There are those who sort of love themselves and are narcissistic. And I know a number of these. <laughs> uh, and then there's a lot in between. And I think that you, there are complacent, uh, in some respects, complacent narcissists who, almost by definition being a narcissist, love themselves. So is that self-acceptance? Maybe yes, maybe no. I would say that it is, but it's a disabling self-acceptance. Whereas, uh, to your point about lasting behavioral change, I think that at least psychologically, if you are divorcing parts of yourself, if you hate parts of yourself, aspects of yourself that have been informed by your history, that and I'm borrowing this phrase from somewhere else, but like what you resist persists, oh, sure. right? And that in that you are going to carry that unproductive and uh, in some ways self-defeating tension within you, even if someone is forcing you to change your behavior or incentivizing you to change your external behavior, right? And so even if technically you're changing a behavior, if you if you carry self-loathing, even partial self-loathing with you, hating an aspect of yourself or a certain emotion within yourself, I view that as a loss. Agree. Yeah.